This is Twit. Now, do you still use the mechanical hard drive? I know I do. Now, flash storage has become so cheap and available that outside of backup systems and NAS, SSDs and flash memory now hold the data on most of our devices, right? Well, hard drive shipments actually peaked in 2015, and a few are sold every year. But in terms of terabytes sold, hard drives are more important than ever. That's right. Within web storage and backups, we're dumping more of our data into the cloud and adding AI and big data and global server capacity is increasing faster than ever. So that's where hard drives are really playing a role. Now, you can increase the storage capacity of a hard drive in a few ways. You can add more disks platters. Uh, you can add more tracks per platter to make the bit smaller. Now, each of these have their problems, though. For one, we're, we're just out of space to add platters. Uh, an 18 terabyte drive may be cramming nine platters into a standard hard drive enclosure. Now, adding more bits or tracks have their own problems, too. They make it either smaller or you also need to shrink the right head. Now, if the head's too much larger than the tracks or the bits, you're liable to accidentally overwrite neighboring bits when you're trying to write, like trying to use a giant marker to write on a really narrow line. It doesn't work. Now, you can shrink the write head, but that this actually makes it harder to generate the magnetic field needed to write the data. Now, you can cope with this by changing the platter material or by lowering its coercivity or how resistance is to outside magnetic fields. But this resistance is... It's a problem. It's a big problem. Now, at the scale of nanoparticles like those on a hard drive, materials with low coercivity have a tendency to randomly flip their magnetic polarity. Not good if you really want reliability and long-term data storage. Now, the solution may be to have two techniques called microwave and heat-assisted magnetic recording, or MAMR or HAMR. Now, they, these actually use a energy source, either a microwave-generating device called a spin-torque oscillator or a laser uh, to actually change the materials or platter's material. Now, this coped, coupled with a more stable platter material and a smaller right head lets you pack more data onto each platter. Pretty cool. Now, T Toshiba actually just shipped the first MAMR drive at 18 terabyte mile. Huge. Now, earlier this month, and the MAMR drives from Western Digital are expected shortly. And in fact, Seagate has a 20 terabyte drive that they're targeting enterprise partners. And in fact, may, we may actually get customer or consumer versions out pretty soon as well. I'm going to bring my co-host in because, uh, Cheaper, I want to start with you because obviously we always thought that you know traditional spin disks were on the outs because SSD was getting shorter. Um, SSD, uh, you know, uh, these types of disks are getting, you know, they're getting less, they're getting cheaper, they're getting shorter to use, easier to use, easier to obtain. What is happening here? Like, why are they still focusing on the older technology? Well, the older technology is. You know, tried and true, and it's been around for a long time. Now, the cool thing about um, what they're doing is it's actually not really super new. It's only new as being applied to spinning discs. The whole idea of using a laser and then a magnetic device of some sort to flip a bit has been used in certain types of optical storage, but now that the technology has gotten better, we're able to go and do a little bit more things. Um, we're able to get a lot more data packed in in a smaller amount of space. So they're taking a page from the optical disk folks. In fact, the last time I saw this was actually from Wang Industries. So that's a page from the history books. And um, we're able to pack an awful lot of data in there. So... Maybe, just maybe, this might be an interesting way for data centers to go and pack a lot more data on premise. And obviously, it's going to be good for the folks that are doing things in the um, data center world. Right, right, right. Yeah, Curtis, I want to throw this to you because obviously, from an enterprise perspective, a lot of organizations are still looking for ways to squeeze more storage uh, and more performance out of these, you know, more traditional disks, and of course, you know, lowering the costs and and be more cost effective. Do you think that this will help? Do you think this that this means that uh, enterprise storage and, and data stores will, you know, start st still continue using these traditional disks as we move forward, uh, and it'll cause the SSDs to maybe find new ways and some of these other memory based storage to, to find new ways to actually reduce the costs to make it more prevalent. Well, I think what we will probably see is a lot of people trying to use both technologies. Something that we've seen over the last 10 years is that we have had a number of supply disruptions. Uh, first, there was flooding 
in Thailand that disrupted the spinning disc, spinning magnetic disc market. Now we're having a uh, disruption in the semiconductor market. So I think what we're probably going to see is companies looking at both of these, playing the economics and looking at ways to have both of these technologies there to buffer themselves and protect themselves against supply chain disruptions. There's certainly room for both technologies in the enterprise data center. I'm just glad to see some genuine potential for improvement in spinning magnetic media. Right, I agree. I agree. I think this is an interesting story. And we're, and I think, Chibber, one more last question to you. They're talking about actually bringing this to consumers. Why would, why would they try to bring this technology to consumers? I thought consumers were sold on moving to SSD. Um, and even in the larger drives, I see a lot more people saying, hey, you know, I'm buying this, you know, 10 terabyte SSD. You know, I'm spending three, four hundred dollars, but I'm OK with doing that because of just the fact that of just the performance I'm getting out of it and a re little bit better reliability. Do consumers really need this? Actually, I'm not sure. The the numbers that I've been seeing, you know, watching different podcasts and reading various articles seems to indicate that the SSDs are still ruling the world for gamers. But for normal people that are just trying to store more stuff, you know, I'm starting to hear people doing bigger and bigger hard drives. So maybe, you know, this might be something that we're going to see in the consumer but a little later, I think the the sixty terabytes are going to be enterprise for quite a while. Um, but it should drag up the smaller drives um, as you know as far as price. So I would love to be able to go and put you know be able to have really inexpensive ten terabyte drives in my home NAS or twenty terabyte drives. And you know who knows what we'll see. Maybe we'll have this nice trickle down effect uh, for the consumer.